All rise. Court is in session. Welcome to Watch Mojo's The Verdict, the series where we tackle the biggest debates in pop culture and put them to rest. Today, we'll be deciding once and for all, is Groundhog Day a time travel movie? That's right, woodchuck chuckers, it's Groundhog Day! Get up and check me! How can you know the future? It's one of those infinite time loop situations you might have heard about. <laughs> that I might have heard about? Yeah. Remember, like any high-profile court case, there are strong arguments to be made on both sides. If you disagree with our verdict, be sure to state your case in the comments below. Let's dive in. Oh, but first, a spoiler warning is in effect. Watch out for that first step, it's a doozy. <laughs> this should seem simple, right? It's so simple. A time travel movie involves time travel. Bing! Bing! But when you put that term under the microscope and start pulling at the strings, the definition unravels into a much more nebulous concept, one with which Groundhog Day has a rather complicated relationship. Time travel! What? The vast majority of popular cinema is narrative-driven, but there's more than one way to tell a story. Many films play fast and loose with time and chronology without making their narrative explicitly centered on time travel. Memento is a non-linear head trip that will have you more twisted up than 90% of time travel movies. How am I supposed to heal if I can't feel time? The Fountain and Cloud Atlas both take us on complex journeys through time, and yet neither can rightfully be called time travel movies. From womb to tomb, we are bound to others, past and present. Where do you draw the line? And where does Groundhog Day fall? Someday somebody's going to see me interviewing a groundhog and think I don't have a future. I think it's a nice story. In order to answer this question, we'll be taking a look at the unifying features and characteristics that time travel movies overwhelmingly share in common. Time travel is a plot device, not a genre in and of itself. Bang! Whether it's used in a thriller, comedy, or action film, there's often some shocking twist that implicates the protagonist or another character in unexpected ways. The ending of 12 Monkeys is a great example. The phone call I just made? Five minutes ago, and five minutes ago, 30 years ago, they just put it together. James Cole's traumatic childhood experience takes on a whole new significance. Predestination, starring Ethan Hawke, is a more recent example with a delightfully complex twist. Can we change our futures? I, I don't know. Arrival is one of those gray area films. Is it about time travel or the perception of time? How can you know the future? Regardless, like many time travel movies, it brings things full circle in ways that wouldn't be possible without a character being displaced in time. But what about our buddy Phil? Given that he's reliving February 2nd over and over again, Groundhog Day is all about predictability. A gust of wind. Dog bark. Cue the truck. This proves to be surprisingly fertile ground for Bill Murray's comedic style, but no major plot twists. Glacial clay when entering Lake Geneva, this river is clear blue upon exiting. Jim? What is the Rhone? The Rhone, good for $1,000. Instead, the film uses repetition to serve up a revelation of a more personal variety when Phil's imprisonment in Punxsutawney invites self-discovery. Well, sometimes I wish I had a thousand lifetimes. I don't know, Phil, maybe it's not a curse. Just depends on how you look at it. Fun fact, the film's original draft did actually include a massive twist in which we learn that Rita is stuck living the next day over and over again. Time travel movies almost always involve a mechanism of some sort. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious... Most commonly, time travel is made possible by some sort of time machine or a time master. The latter is any individual with the ability to move themselves or others through time. This might sting a little. As for the time machine, it can be any device, magical, mechanical, or even a force of nature like a black hole, that makes time travel possible. What about the time slippage? 
Well, neither one of us have time to worry about relativity right now, Dr. Brand. Most time travel films have certain rules, which are often tied to their mechanism of choice. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Exactly. Assuming a Christmas carol isn't one big dream, even Charles Dickens provided a mechanism in the form of ghosts. I can remember nearly 1900 years. I am the ghost of Christmas past. No one ever does a big exposition dump in Groundhog Day, however. Nor does Phil ever discover why this is happening to him. There are rules, and Phil tests them in a variety of ways, but they don't yield any answers apart from, you're stuck. Every morning I wake up without a scratch on me, not a dent in the fender. I am an immortal. If Groundhog Day is a time travel movie, it's more interested in the journey than the science. Speaking of rules, most time travel movies agree that you should not interact with your past self. Awful things happen to wizards who meddle with time, Harry. The implications vary from one movie to the next, but it's almost always bad. Seeing a doppelganger could drive you mad, or even destroy you because physics. Bang! Then again, if the time travel movie subscribes to a closed loop theory, in which everything has and always will play out the same, an assist from your past self may be an unavoidable part of the equation. You're as bad as me. Wrong. I'm setting it right. Thankfully for Phil, he is the only Phil in Punxsutawney on February 2nd. Well, other than the Groundhog, of course. And let's be honest, this town isn't big enough for two of him. The master, Punxsutawney Phil, the world's most famous weatherman, the Groundhog. Rather than traveling from the future to the past and encountering his past self, Phil simply wakes up again the same morning in the same physical state as before, but remembering already having done so. That's right, woodchuck chuckers, it's Groundhog Day! Get up and check! We get that the time anomaly that Phil is experiencing is a uniquely frustrating one, but hey, at least he doesn't have to worry about paradox psychosis. The seven stages in paradox psychosis are stage one, denial. Two, itching. Three, extreme thirst and urination. Four, excessive gas. Five, acute paranoia. Six, uncontrolled perspiration. And seven, homicidal rage. When you mess with time, bad things can happen. Just ask Marty McFly. Third time's a charm. No! One false move and you can rewrite history or give your nemesis the tools to get filthy rich. You might be a nobody back home, but when you time travel, lives hang in the balance. Funny, I never thought it would be you. Time travel movies almost always involve an element of trying to rewrite the past or avoid messing it up. In Terminator, changing the past is the machine mandate, and yet it's this time traveling arms race that actually leads to the birth of John Connor. But I guess I have a while yet before you're old enough to even understand these tapes. The reality is, even a small change can have massive consequences. Seriously, how many times did Ashton Kutcher's character get it wrong in the butterfly effect? Mom, you're gonna be okay. You can change it. In Phil's case, however, the repetition makes him feel as if his actions have no consequences. We could do whatever we wanted! <gasps> That's true. We could do whatever we want. And so he initially shows a complete disregard for the happiness and well-being of both himself and others. He explicitly puts himself in mortal danger to test the limits. I'm betting he's gonna swear first. In many ways, Groundhog Day flies in the face of time-honored time travel themes by making Phil want nothing to do with this break in space-time. He doesn't desire to bring about change or preserve anything. He doesn't have any explicit purpose. I'll give you a winter prediction. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be gray, and it's gonna last you for the rest of your life. Or so he thinks. Bing! Bing! While there's no authority to tell him what's going on, Phil does wind up finding meaning in his experience. Yes? Yes, I'd like a piano lesson, please. This isn't a film about righting past wrongs, saving the future, or establishing equilibrium in the time stream. But despite his initial resistance, Phil's experience living the same day over and over again is a journey of personal growth. Who wants coffee? Get it while it's hot. Oh, thanks, Phil. Larry, skim milk, two sugar. 
Yeah, thanks, Phil. While time travel plots are inherently convoluted, they most often follow fairly conventional narrative arcs. By contrast, Groundhog Day is a deceptively simple but fascinating exercise in storytelling because it goes against how stories are typically told. Rather than the boredom one might expect, the writers were able to find meaning in the repetition. What did you do today? Oh, same old, same old. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Have you reached a verdict? The evidence has been presented, and we are ready to render our verdict. Groundhog Day is not a time travel movie. It's a time loop movie. And while one could argue that this is just a subtype of the time travel genre, it's clearly cut from a very different cloth. Okay, what do you want me to do? I don't know! The narrative structure of a time loop movie is such that it actually eschews all the usual characteristics of a time travel movie in favor of one unifying principle, getting out of the time loop. Something is different. Good or bad? Anything different is good. Groundhog Day isn't a time travel movie, but it's arguably more important as a result. It's been interpreted as everything from a spiritual guidebook to an analogy about military service and a lesson in economics. No matter what happens tomorrow or for the rest of my life, I'm happy now because I love you. Though Groundhog Day was not the first time loop film, it did popularize the mechanic, giving birth to numerous imitators. It's one of those infinite time loop situations you might have heard about that I might have heard about. Yeah. From the concept of having the character's repetition cued by a certain song, gotta get up, gotta get out, gotta get home before the morning comes, to the now classic montage of time loop debauchery, the film's influence reverberates throughout pop culture, and it does it on its own terms. What a day this has been, what a rare mood I'm in, why it's almost like being in love. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.